that pug. Oh, I want him. Oh, but that shit, you know I want him. Oh, these are the best dogs. Actually, those are the worst dogs. Adam, please don't ruin this for me. Sorry, I'm going to. Hi, I'm Adam Conover, and not only are so-called purebred dogs riddled with genetic disease, but dog breeds aren't even a real thing. We made them up. We talk about dog breeds as though nature created them that way, and as though every mutt were just a mix of different pure breeds. Mr. Bumps is one fifth retriever, one sixth poodle, one twelfth border collie, and I can't be sure, but I suspect there's some chow in there <laughs> because he drools a little. <laughs> but in fact, mutts are dogs in their natural, healthy states, and pure breeding is a form of genetic manipulation humans made up just to amuse ourselves. Outside of a few traditional working dogs, ninety percent of all dogs Dog breeds were created in just the last 100 years. Just to be clear, I'm not enjoying learning any of this. In 19th century Victorian England, eugenics was all the rage, and competitive dog breeding became a fad among the wealthy. I made ah. a dog with really loose skin. Well, I made one with a super flat, fucked up face. Wow. That is super weird. Isn't it stupid? After these Dr. Frankensteins had played God for a while, they declare their weird little monster a pure breed. <laughs> Behold my newest creation, the Corgi. And that's all a purebred dog is. It's totally arbitrary. Wait, if a purebred, that, that means like a good healthy dog. <laughs> nope. When you hear purebred, you should think inbred. God damn it. Kennel clubs prohibit purebred dogs from ever mating outside their breed, and often mate them with their own parents and siblings. One study found that 10,000 pugs have the same genetic diversity as 50 individuals, making this little guy as inbred as an Austrian duke. My blood is very pure. All of this inbreeding means that the average purebred dog is sicker than, well, the dog. 60% of golden retrievers die of cancer. A third of King Charles Spaniels have skulls that are too small for their brains. Great Danes are so huge that their hearts can't support their bodies and, well, as for little tiny dogs, have you ever seen a little tiny dog that looked happy? They know there's something wrong with them and they know that we did it to them. Hi, Ed. And now we come to the bulldog. <gasps> He is so cute! Yeah, he is. If you find total genetic failure cute. A hundred years ago, the bulldog was a proud breed, but a century of inbreeding has ruined them. Their noses are so squashed, they can barely breathe. Their heads are so big, they can only give birth by cesarean section. Their tails can become ingrown. They basically all have hip dysplasia, and their average life expectancy is six years. Let's face it, these dogs shouldn't even be alive. But Oliver here won Best in Show. Yeah, more like Best in the Freak Show. Hmm. The sad part is, kennel clubs could cure all of the Bulldog's problems if they just allowed them to crossbreed. But they won't, because then they might not look like the cute little Bulldogs everyone loves. But our insistence that these dogs live up to our arbitrary standards is causing them to get sick and die. As much as you love the Bulldog, the fact that it exists at all is borderline animal abuse. Why do I hang out with you? Look, there's an easy solution. When you get a dog, don't worry about what breed it is. Just go to your local shelter and get yourself a little puppy mutt. He'll be happy, healthy, and 100% all-natural dog. Give me that puppy. Join me next time on Adam Ruins Everything, when I'll be talking about how giving people birthday gifts is a drain on the economy. Dude, just shut up and play with the puppy. Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy. 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 Hey, buddy.